Okay, this is the video for 6.3, Leapfrog, a solidifying understanding task. And this uh, little guy over here is our Leapfrog. Pretty cute, huh? So, Josh is animating a scene in which a troop of frogs is auditioning for the Animal Channel reality show, The Bayou's Got Talent. In this scene, the frogs are demonstrating their Leapfrog acrobatics act. Josh has completed a few key images in this segment and now needs to describe the transformations that connect various images in the scene. So we're going to be working on our translations, our rotations, and our reflections. And sometimes we're going to combine them to get this leapfrog to get to wherever we need him or her to go. So for each pre-image, which is the original figure, slash image and that's the transformation of the original figure combination listed below and that would be on the next slide <coughs> describe the transformation that moves the pre-image to the final image all right so here we go right now these are very important bullets if you decide the transformation is a rotation you will need to give the center of rotation some people call that the point of rotation the direction of the rotation, and that's clockwise or counterclockwise, and then the measure of the angle of rotation, like 90 degrees, 180 degrees, something like that. If you decide the transformation is a reflection, you will need to give the equation of the line of reflection. If you decide the transformation is a translation, you will need to describe the rise and run between pre-image points and their corresponding image points. And that's the notation where we just go x plus or minus a number, y plus or minus a number. Okay. If you decide it takes a combination of transformations to get from the pre-image to the final image, describe each transformation in the order they would be completed. All right, so let's go. All right, this is a great little table right in your notebook right here. And they're going to have a graph in your notebook. And I also will have a copy of the graph for you in class. All right. And they see you've got this first column as your pre-image. And then the second column is your final image. And then over here, you're describing what's going on. All right, using the language of transformations, whether it's a reflection, a rotation, or a, what's the third one, translation. Okay, so let's get going. <laughs> Very cool right here. So here is the piece of graph paper I gave you. All right, and you've got image one, image two, image three, image four, and image five. I don't know what the bucket's for right now nor what's going on right here because we're going to focus on these images right here so back to the descriptions okay first thing we have to do is use image one as our pre-image and what transformation would get that to image two so picture image one to image two well right here would be my pre-image image one to my image of image one which is image two and does it look to you like to you that we just did a straight translation right there so what you do is pick an anchor point on your original pre-image and I don't know this tip of this middle finger looks like a great anchor point so pick an anchor point on the pre-image right there and then we're gonna translate just like this right here to that point right there so translation rotation reflection or a combination and lo this looks just like a translation to me so this point in the pre-image ends up on this point on the image right there so now all we have to do is figure out how far we slid horizontally so let's count these carefully one two three four five and then how far vertically? We went up one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I missed that, didn't I? Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five. We went six horizontally. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertically. So I'm going to go to my description and use the official notation of a translation. So every point x, y is going to go to, and what did we add to the x? That was 6, I believe. 
And then how far did we go up? Seven. So just go a Y plus seven. And there's your description of the first transformation. That's a translation. Now, the next one is image two to image three. So let's look at the graph. <laughs> okay. Now, image two is my pre-image, and this image three is my image. All right. Well, does it look to you like our leapfrog did a little rotation and then translated? Kind of like jumping off the, uh, the diving platform and doing a backwards flip or something like that. Kind of cool. All right. So if I'm going to rotate, I typically start with the rotation first, but you could translate and then rotate. Your order doesn't matter here. So if I'm going to start with a rotation, here's what makes it really easy. Okay. Notice how I did a horizontal and a vertical axis right here at the point that I'm going to rotate about. All right. Now picture another point so we can kind of work this out like this point over here on the other hand all right now if I look at this image does it look like this point was rotated counterclockwise or you could do it clockwise too because that looks like that's a 180 degree rotation so where would this point end up with that rotation counterclockwise of 180 degrees well I'll, all I'm going to do is count this one, two, three, four. So if it's four units to the point of rotation, then I got to go four more. One, two, three, four. And that anchor point would end up right there. All right. So what have we done first? We have done a 180 degree rotation counterclockwise about this point. And we're going to need the coordinates of this point, which are going to be hard to read on this graph because things are so small here but that looks like an X of 13 and is that a Y of 29 so let's get back to our description and let's put in what we know so far okay so we're gonna rotate about the point and the X was 13 and the Y was 29 alright and then which direction did we rotate we rotated counterclockwise and that really doesn't matter so 180 degrees and I said counterclockwise but if you would have rotated clockwise you would have been in the same spot so that part doesn't matter with 180 degrees alright so there's the rotation right there and remember with the rotation you need the point of rotation the angle of rotation and a direction and then this is then our translation like we did above so let's look at how far we translated so just pick that original anchor point right here and it ends up right here so it looks like we went one two three four units to the right and then one two three four units down so that to me looks like an X plus four and did we say four units down Y minus four all right there's your second transformation right there and that's a double transformation we rotated and then we translated and if you would have translated first that would have worked too okay now we're gonna go image 3 to image 4 let's look at our graph image 3 to image 4 okay now I'm gonna use the same anchor point right here that tip of the right middle finger okay oh first I didn't do that there we go that's what we already talked about but now I'm doing the image 3 the image 4 so the tip of the right middle finger all right now it looks to me like again our leapfrog has rotated and that to me looks like a 90 degree rotation so I'm gonna put another coordinate plane in there probably right there unless I did the translation first now there it is right there all right now pick another anchor point to really visualize this and I'm going to use that same point right over here okay and I'm picturing rotating this time 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees clockwise right there and to figure out exactly where it's going to go on the grid I just have to do this well if I'm one two three four units to the right then when I rotate 90 degrees clockwise I'm gonna be one two three four units below that anchor point 
So there it is right there. So now my frog has done the rotation, so it looks like this. But now we have to translate again. So let's take that same original anchor point, and that's going to translate to what? Right there. All right, so let's count these out now. So how far did we go to the right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we went one, two, three down. So let's get back to the description now. All right. Oh, and I, this is two again. So let's think. We rotated first. And what's the point we rotated about? Well, we rotated about this point right here, which has an X coordinate of, is that 17? And then a Y coordinate of 25. So let's get back here. So we rotated about the point 17, 25. And don't worry, if it's an exam, I'm going to make sure those are much clearer. Okay. And then how far did we rotate? Well, this one was 90 degrees, wasn't it? And this time we rotated clockwise. There's your rotation right there. And now I forget what we added to the X and added to the Y or subtracted from the Y for the translation. So let's look one more time. And let's see, to go from here to there, we added one, two, three, four, five, six. So plus seven horizontally, and then one, two, minus three vertically. So let's go an X plus seven and a Y minus three. And there's our transformation to get image three to image four. And it was a rotation and a translation. All right, this is cool. Now let's go image one to image five. Image one to image five. Wow. All right, so I'm going from here all the way over there. Okay. Now kind of look at your two frogs right here, the pre-image and the image. It looks to me like we have a reflection and then a translation. So if we're going to reflect, and I always like to do my translation last, so if we're going to reflect, what's the line of reflection? Well, do you agree if this leapfrog reflected over a vertical line, then this figure would look like that figure right there. So I'm going to draw a vertical line through my anchor point right there. And then, oh, I love a vertical line because what's the equation of my vertical line? That's just x equals a number because every x coordinate on this line would be seven. So let's go to our description now and we're going to reflect over the line x equals seven. So reflect in x equals seven and that's the way we say this in an advanced class right there. If you want to say reflect over you may do so. All right and now we just have our transformation or our translation excuse me. So take that anchor point and it's going to slide all the way down to that point right there. Okay, all right. Oh, I'm, I'm picturing where this hand would end up too, okay, on the reflection. So now watch this, you guys. Reflecting over a vertical line, can I just go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four more and go right to there? There you go. Now picture that frog reflecting over that vertical line, and you would be looking at that figure right there. Now let's do this translation right here. Okay, we're going to have to count this carefully, okay? So, help me out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen to there. I got a little more to go. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I think I'm there at twenty, aren't I? So, we went twenty to the right, and then how far down? One, two, three three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I think that's 12 down. Let's see how we did. Did we go X plus 20? And then Y minus 12? Yes, there we go. And so that's the transformation to get image one to image five. We reflected in the line X equals seven, and then we translated by adding 20 to our x-coordinate and subtracting 12 from our y-coordinate. 
Okay, we got one more, image two to image four. And there's so much stuff on that graph, I started with a clean graph here. So I'll make sure you guys have plenty of graph paper too. And that was what, image two to image four? All right. Well, image two to image four, it looks like we're going to have a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise and then a translation. So I probably started with horizontal and vertical axis right there at that anchor point again. And if I rotate 90 degrees like that, and that's counterclockwise, then this point right here would end up, well, it's one, two, three, four to the right. So now it's going to be one, two, three, four below right there. All right, awesome. Okay, so now picture your frog doing that rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. All right, and let's go ahead and do the notation for that. Oh, and by the way, we need this a point of rotation, which is, what's the x? We used that point of rotation earlier. 13, and what's the y? 29. So we're going to rotate about 13, 29, and what's the angle of rotation? 90 degrees. The direction was counterclockwise. There's my rotation. And then, did we count already for the translation? I don't think we did. So let's do that now. So now let's take this anchor point, the uh, middle finger of the frog's left hand, and that would end up then right to there. No, right to there. Watch it carefully. All right, yeah. All right, so now let's count this carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Looks like we went eleven to the right and one, two, three, four, five. Let me count that again. Eleven to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. And then how far down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 11 to the right would be x plus 11, and 7 down would be y minus 7. And there we've completed that first chart. That is so cool. Okay, I've got students working in my room right now, so I'm going to stop the recording now, see if anybody needs anything, and then we'll finish this up. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Well, I came back to my presentation to finish this recording, and guess what? The only slide I had left was our original graph with our beautiful leapfrogs. So we are all done with uh, the presentation for 6.3. So you guys uh, do your ready, set, go carefully. And please contact me if you have any questions. Get really good at translations, reflections, and rotations, and how you communicate them mathematically. And then also be able to combine them. You guys have a great day.